There is a common misunderstanding when people try to create folds or stretches on uh, articulating uh, organic models that they need to use something like uh, soft body dynamics or something like that. But in fact, there are some really nice ways you can do very predictable, procedural and uh, controllable, art directable folds and stretches. And today, to do that, we are going to use the tension tag. Because as you already know, nose man knows. So let's see how we can do the following thing. When this bends, it creates these creases on the inside and these stretches on the outside. And when it goes to the other side, it does exactly the opposite. It stretches here and creates these vertical bumps and here it folds. So we get this uh, very cheap cartoony looking pair of trousers or I don't know, uh, say sleeve or something like that. But nonetheless, this is not dynamic and it's all driven by the tension tag. So the first thing is to explain what the tension tag does. But before that, let me preface it with the following. If you go to the help files of Cinema 4D, so select the tension tag and just go anywhere in the parameters and right click and say show help. The example you see is actually what we are going to do. But in the documentation, they're actually using just a texture. This happens at render time, whereas I'm going to show you, as you already saw, how to do that in real time. Let's go and create a a very, very simple object, a plane. Let me turn on my grow shading lines and let me set this to three by three. So we have one center polygon. I'm going to make it editable. And then I'm going to go to polygon mode. Now to see things better, I like to go to hidden lines and that's much more visible. Now let's go to this plane, right click here and add the tag from the rigging tags that is called tension. You can always go to the tags and go down here and find it. Now, by itself, uh, nothing really happens. We need to do a couple of things. So first of all, we need to make maps. The fold map means that it's going to record any polygons that become smaller than they are in their default state, and more on that later. And the stretch map is going to record the polygons that become bigger. So the fold is for the polygons that fold become smaller and the stretch is for the polygons that stretch become bigger. I'm going to make a map for this and a map for this. You can always create your own vertex map and just link it here, but this is the easiest way to create these vertex maps. Now, again, we still need to do one more thing. We need to fix the tension. And when we click this button, the sizes of each polygon are going to be recorded. Now, how exactly they do that, I'm not sure, but that's what we do. So fix tension. Now, let's go and see these vertex maps. Now, if I go to uh, grow shading, you will see that we get zeros, red is zero and zeros for this. The problem is that if we start playing around with the tag itself or anything else, we won't be able to see the feedback from whatever is going on. So let's go and select one of these tags and create a material that represents the value that exists within this vertex map. So I'm going to go and double click here. Let's call this fold and I'm going to open it. And in the material editor, I'm just going to go to the luminance just so that we can see what's going on. And uh, from the textures, I'm going to go to effects and add a vertex map. Click on the little thumbnail and let's drag the one that says fold. If you hover over your tags, it will tell you if it's the stretch and the fold. So grab the fold, put it in here, and then let's take this material and apply it on the plane. By default, you'll see it's black now because the zeros are recorded as black because this is a gradient essentially. Now, if I want to change this black and white gradient to something else, it's very, very simple. Go up over here where it says vertex map and without touching this, go and add on top of this a colorizer. The colorizer currently and by default, it's just going to map zeros to ones to black and white. So you won't see any difference here. But if you open the gradient and load one of these 
gradients here, we'll be able to get something that will give us different colors for different values from zero to one. I'm gonna get the heat one and just change the black to something like blue. And you can see the changes already are shown in the viewport. Now that we've set up this material and I've applied it, if I select this polygon, go to my skill tool and make it bigger, you can see now what's happening here. We're changing the colors because we are changing the values of the vertex map. And because this became bigger, these become smaller and it creates an image of the data of how the scaling occurred. If I make it smaller, it does the opposite. It makes this one one. And because it's a fold, the values increase as the polygon gets smaller. Whereas if we make it bigger, you will see that the rest of them get increased values because yellow is a higher value, it's one, because they are getting smaller. So if I select just the object without the tag, I can see that represented in the colors. The fold will do exactly the opposite. It will just invert that information. But you can see how this works. Now it looks a bit funky because we don't have many points, but that's the premise. If you want to fine tune how much of this scaling is gonna propagate into these values, you select the tension tag and you change the amount. The amount relates to which mode we have, relative and absolute. Relative uses a percentage in the amount, whereas absolute uses the actual units, centimeters. We are not gonna deal with this. We're gonna leave it at relative and we're just gonna eyeball it. And you're gonna change the values here. So you can see if this is your maximum value, if you like the current value being blue, let me deselect everything, which means zero. And you can always change this so you have a smaller propagation of values as this one becomes bigger or smaller. Now, again, it doesn't really matter what uh, you are doing because we are going to change this and eyeball it depending on what we are trying to do. But this is all the tension tag does. It compares the polygon sizes from when we clicked on the fixed tension. And if these become smaller, then the fold map, this vertex map, increases the values of the ones that become smaller, whereas the stretch map does exactly the opposite. So let's go and recreate our beautiful little cylinder. In an empty project, I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to remove the caps. I'm going to turn on my grow shading lines or my hidden lines, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference because I just want to make the topology quite dense so that we get enough of that uh, folding and stretching information. So let's go to the object. Let's set the rotation segments to 64 and let's set the height segments to, I don't know, 36 is a good number. And I think that is good for now. If you want to make it uh, taller or narrower, I think I'm going to make it a bit narrower just so that it looks similar to the other one and maybe increase my height segments to 64 as well. That looks perfect. Now, because we're going to use vertex maps, it has to be an editable object. So press C to make it editable. And now let's go and add our tension tag. So right click, go to rigging tags. Let's go to the tension tag. And I'm gonna set this as a default state. So immediately I'm gonna fix the tension and then make the two maps. Now the question is, what are we planning to do with this? Are we going to use um, joints uh, to deform it or plane deformers? Well, it doesn't make any difference. The simplest thing we can do now to illustrate what happens is to use a bend deformer. So I'm gonna put the bend deformer here. I'm gonna make sure that it complies and it's close to the size of the object. And I'm gonna make this 65 and uh, 265. And actually I'm gonna make it 100 so it folds nicely and uh, set the keep length so we have uh, the same length of the object when it bends. And now I can go and fold it left or right. Excellent. Now if I go and select these now, you will see that the stretch ones change value where the polygons are becoming bigger 
and the fold one changes the values to the polygons that become smaller. So we have these two distinct areas, which we are going to use together with a deformer to uh, mask some folds and some stretches. So the basic thing is fixed. Now, let me add one more control element. I want to be able to see both of these as a material. So even if I have something else selected and not the vertex map, I can still see the colors on my object. So I'm going to do something similar to before, but I'm going to put both vertex maps in the material. Now we're going to do it using a very specific technique. I'm going to call this fold and stretch. And I'm going to go and put it in the luminance channel so it doesn't interfere with uh, the lighting of the scene. And uh, I'm going to use the fusion. The fusion is like the layer shader, but takes only two. But the good thing about the fusion is that it gives us real time feedback in the viewport, whereas the layer channel doesn't always do that. So let's go to the blend channel. Let's go here and add a vertex map. And let's go to the vertex map and let's put the first one. So the stretch and I'm going to go up and uh, with the vertex map here, I'm going to add a colorizer and I'm going to set this to be, let's go and choose a dark color here, a blue, and let's put a yellow color on this side. Let's make it yellow. Now let's go up a level and let me go and copy this. So copy shader, go to the base channel and paste the shader. And this, if we go all the way down to the vertex, it's not the stretch. Now it's the fold. And we're going to change the color on this. So uh, I don't know, I'm going to put blue is good because it will retain uh, the color of the other one. And let's go here and put something. Um, let's go to a pink color. And we're going to see how this is going to work. We can adjust the colors. Now the mode, how these two are going to blend. After I apply it, I'm going to set this to something like add. So now you can see both of these effects of my little bend and the polygons that change size. Now, of course, don't forget that we need to adjust it based on how much of that data we want it to propagate. Because as you can see now that we get quite an abrupt change in the data from nothing to pretty much full folds and stretches. So let's go here and increase the value until we get a, a gradient, which uh, looks good enough for what we're trying to do. And uh, this is going to be used as a mask. Now you will see that it starts without anything. It creates more stretch and more of the folds. And of course, you can always go and adjust it at any given moment. It doesn't really matter when you can adjust that. Excellent. So the masks are ready. So it's time to go and apply the deformers. Now this is a bit tricky because there is one little thing we're going to hit right now. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create my creases and my stretches using a displacer. And what I'm going to do is turn off the bend for now. Let me put the displacer here and I'm going to go and create a PBR material and put it on top of this so I can see the cylinder nicely lit so I can see whatever bumps and displacements I'm going to make. Uh, later on, I'm going to switch it around so I can test and see which one of the two I want to be visible. Excellent. So let's go to the displacer and let's go to the shading and add some noise. And you can see that it's a nice little bumpy noise. I want to stretch it out. So this is going to be the fold. So displacer folds. So the folds need to be horizontal go that way towards the Z axis. So let's go to the noise and let's see what do we need to stretch to make them go that way. So I need to make this, let's say 4,000. There you go. That looks interesting. And I think it's the Z as well. There we go. And this one 4,000. And I'm going to make it shorter on the Y. So we get these nice little folds. Again, we can adjust these later on. And of course, you can change the contrast and brightness of this and, uh, you know, try and make them as uh, uniform or not as possible. But for now, I think that is quite good. 
Now, the only thing we need to do now is tell the folds this displace the former to be masked by the folds vertex map. So go to the displacer folds, go to the fall off and drag the folds in here. Now you can see nothing happens. That's because we are vertical and the bend deformer is off. Now here's the little problem. When I add this over here, if I put the colors on, what you will see is that the noise is propagating. And if I press A, to refresh, these are refreshing. What's happening here is we have a feedback loop because the tension tag reads the displacer as well and then recalculates the amount of folding and so forth. So we want to find a way to decouple the displacer folds from the bend deformation. And uh, the solution is quite simple. We're going to add a connect object. So drag this out of here and let's go and grab a connect object. Let's put the cylinder under the connect and make sure for good measure to turn off weld. And then we're going to create our normal sibling hierarchy and make this a sibling of that. And there you go. Now it works without any problem, without folds and with folds. And the folds are only where this mask exists. Now, instead of a connect, if you wish, you can use something else. For example, a subdivision surface object. So if you do this and turn off the connect, you're going to get the same effect, but with the additional subdivision. So it depends uh, if you're working in a lower resolution and you want to subdivide it, you can do this method or you can go with a connect object if you've already defined your polygon resolution. Excellent. So let's uh, switch these materials here and uh, look at that. If I go to the bend deformer, you will see that we get the folds. Now you can see that they're swimming inside here. Uh, that's not a huge problem. You need to go to your shading and make sure that uh, the space is UV because otherwise it's going to use a flat projection or something like that and it won't take the bend into consideration. So regardless of which way you bend it now, the bends are here. So let's create the same thing for our stretches. So what I'm going to do is create another displacer, call this stretch. And I'm going to go and invert a couple of these numbers. I'm going to make this 4,000. And I think this one will be 40 or something like that, maybe even smaller. And you can see that it's still coming on this side because I haven't told this to have not the folds, but I can go and replace the folds with the stretches. Over here, you drag it on top. When it becomes a finger, it will exchange it. And look at that. Let's go and turn on our lines. There they are. There are our stretches. And uh, of course, you can go and change the amount if you want to make it less prominent. Now, let's assume that for some reason you don't like how this is looking at this current moment. It's uh, too abrupt and you want to blur it out. There is an interesting way uh, you can uh, add to control exactly which area is going to be deformed and create some sort of uh, blurry mask, so to speak. Go to your object and uh, let's go and select the points which uh, lie inside here. So uh, I don't know, I think that we can start over here and I'm going to use the loop selection. So here's one loop selection. And uh, let's go all the way up to, let's say here. So we've got all these. And uh, I wanted to fill the selection. So I think I did a mistake. So better go to polygons and select this polygon loop and this polygon loop. Good. We have that loop. Let me turn this off so we can see it a bit better. And of course, change my display to hidden line. And we can go and say fill selection, press shift and then convert this into a point selection. So press Command or Control on the PC, click on the points, and it becomes a point selection. Excellent. So this is the area I want my um, deformation to occur mainly and then fade out upwards and downwards. Now, in order to store this data, you need to select the cylinder. Let's turn off the connect for a moment and let's go and in from the select menu, store this selection. And now what I can do 
is I can go to my uh, displace of folds in the fall off and use this as an extra mask over here. And uh, the way you need to set it is, first of all, you need to set point selection and multiply. So it will confine uh, to that area by multiplying that value where one is selected and zero is not selected. It works somewhat like a mask. And the mode needs to be set to something which is slightly blurry. So you can put something like average and there you go. This is how it looks. And I'm going to do the same thing for the stretch. I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to set it to multiply and I'm going to set the mode to average. And now you will see that we're going to get some stretching or some folding. I can increase the number and you can see that it's a bit more calm. Excellent. And let me go and turn on my grow shading and you can see that we get our stretches and we get our folds. Did I set it to multiply? I think I did. Yes, it is multiply. And these are the points. No problem. You can always go and remove some of these and confine it to another area. And of course, if you want to make it a bit smoother, just go and add our new Delta Mush smoothing. And now you will see that we get a really interesting organic effect. This uh, project here is another slight variation of the same theme with a cube instead of a cylinder. Finally, here's a couple of uh, odd little fingers that are doing a nice little dance. This is without the folds and the stretches, so it's just uh, plainly funny. And here's a version where I'm actually applying my folds and my stretches, and you can see how much more weird it looks uh, as if these are two fingers stuck on each other. I was thinking of putting a finger texture, but I thought that will freak you out. Totally. But anyhow, all these files are going to be in the description text below for you to download and go and investigate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for any news on upcoming events or tutorials or to exchange questions and answers. Don't forget, please subscribe, leave a comment, a nice comment below, uh, click the thumbs up button and of course ring the notification bell and uh, I will be doing more of the live shows every couple of weeks uh, with the guests as well as uh, thematic. Uh, this uh, Tuesday we have UVs. Uh, if you're watching this after this Tuesday, which I'm not going to tell, 20th of July, right? That's 2021, by the way. Hopefully you're not going to watch this uh, in a couple of years. But anyhow, we are having a UV extravaganza because as you already know, nose man knows. <laughs>